we've got a place in the choir. Some sing low and some sing higher. Some sing out loud on the telephone wire. Some just slap their hands and paws or anything they got now. Then at one point I realized where I was living in America that uh, my, my kids growing up were going to be little Irish Americans. I just couldn't face that. I flew back one night. I heard this place was for sale. A character by the name of Clancy, John Clancy. And I bought it from with a spit. That was the way we clenched the deal. And I said, I want to build, I want to build a solar house and that needs no maintenance with slate, stone, oak. It was the only place that I felt at home because it's not between anywhere and anywhere, anywhere else. You have to come out onto the peninsula to get here. Tom had moved back to Ireland, moved out of Hollywood. He had, had a bad time, a very bad time with the booze. And he straightened himself out and joined AA, came back. We got to be great friends again. With Tom and Paddy now living back in Ireland, and some of the old rows behind them, the Clancy's and Tommy Makem embarked on a triumphant reunion tour. For all the difficulties and tensions, family was still family, and the old magic was quick to return when they hit the stage. Hello. Thank you. That's enough. Where do we do something? Thanks for waiting 16 years. What about us waiting 16 years? It's some brave young highwayman, the story we will tell. We were staying at the Shelburne Hotel, and uh, I got up in the morning, I went down, I had something to eat, got a call from Tom saying that he was over in Donahue's pub just hundred yards away. I went out the front door and I looked up and I said, there's something wrong with the sun. I said, hello at the doorman. I said, does the sun look funny to you? Oh, it looks fine to me, Mr. Clancy, he said. Uh, how are you doing today? Doing fine. Walked over to Donahue's pub. Sat in beside Tom in the back room there. Ronnie was there, Barney, Seamus Ennis, the guy. And suddenly, I got a total, total fit of panic, panic attack. And I thought my arms were drifting away from me and that my head was detaching. And I was in a fully blown nervous breakdown and I said to Tom get me a double whiskey make it two doubles he said what the hell's wrong with you I said I'm disintegrating I don't know I'm terrified I remember seeing uh, the smoke from somebody's cigarette 
coming up and hitting a shaft of light and it just turned that bright azure color and it just terrified me and Tom called over Maureen O'Donoghue and Paddy they put me up in the sitting room gave me a bottle of whiskey to keep me calm and Ivor Brown the psychiatrist picked me up later that evening and I woke up I was in the drunk tank up in Grange Gorman or wherever. Woke up in the middle of the night surrounded by all these guys hallucinating and everything. And uh, wave after wave after wave of panic attacks. And I thought it was going to last forever. I thought it was just finished. And bit by bit, I got better. I, I didn't associate it with the fact that we, the only way we kept going was we had a constant bottle of whiskey. You wanted some energy? Took it out of the bottle of whiskey. I never associated that with uh, having a nervous breakdown. Then in 1990, got the word. Uh, Tom had moved back. Got a call from his wife one night saying, Tom has got cancer. Went through a bad death. Cancer of the stomach went all over. Died in 1990. Regrets? Never. <laughs> no, I'd do it all again. I enjoyed it so much. This has been a, a, a great life for me. And I've enjoyed the performing, enjoyed the theatre, Enjoy the scene.